and welcome to this 2014 primary candidates forum. Tonight's debate is being sponsored by the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau and hosted by Turtles. My name is Tom Getzinger. I'm the general manager of KCHK Radio in New Prague and very pleased to ask to be your moderator for this evening's forum. Our candidates for Scott County Commissioner District 3 are Deb Barber, Mike Beard, and Matt Lehman. Now it should be noted that an invitation to this debate was extended to all the candidates, but it was declined by candidate Lehman. So we ask that you please welcome our candidates here with us this evening, candidates Barber and Beard. They are arranged in alphabetical order here on stage and they're each going to have up to five minutes to make an introductory comment, after which I'm going to ask them questions. Candidates will each have one minute to respond to each question and they're going to be shown a 15 second warning card and candidates that is right down there. We ask that you do pay very, very good attention to that and then you're gonna be shown a stop card by the timekeeper uh, if you're in the middle of the thought I'll let you just finish that sentence and and that's it and then we'll move on so being clear and concise certainly going to be a part of the evening for you again each candidate has a, an opportunity to make an opening statement that will be five minutes and we'll begin with candidate Barber Hi there. As he said, my name is Deb Barber. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you all for coming out here tonight. It's a beautiful summer evening, so it's nice to see so many people here. And uh, taking the time to get to know the candidates ahead of the very important upcoming primary election. Uh, a little bit about myself. I grew up in northern Minnesota in the Iron Range in the town of Embarrass. Moved to Shakopee in 2000 and lived here now for 14 years with my husband of 21 years, Chip, and my two kids, Caden and Jack, who are 9 and 11. And uh, I've also, in that time, I've started a business here and we've made Shakopee our home. I am a mom, I'm a business owner, and I am an active community volunteer. My background, my educational background, was I started training in engineering and I have a master's degree in engineering. With that degree, I went on and started businesses in the medical device industry, starting my first consulting company at the age of 30 and then further moving that forward and expanding the company in 2004 where we took and uh, formed a uh, larger medical device consulting firm. In that, not just operating and owning the business, I also consult in my consulting work. What I work on specifically is project management and strategic planning. I go into companies that have issues or highly technical complex problems and I help sort those out. I help make the company successful. So with that, why do I choose now to run for Scott County Commissioner? Well, I think that there's an opportunity and there's a good time right now for some new ideas and a fresh perspective on the county board. Uh, we've, had to, we've done what we've had to do over the last few years as we move through the recession, but now there's going to be new challenges. And with that, I think some new ideas it's, it w would be very beneficial. So then, uh, the main things I would like to focus on and my goals as Scott County Commissioner are to work on strategic planning with a focus on economic development and transportation. And then also, secondly, to start working and expanding. We've been a very collaborative county working and coming up with creative solutions. I would like to continue that because I think that's by far the best way to reduce costs and keep uh, being the most efficient as possible. And then thirdly, I want to be a representative for the citizens of Shakopee. I think as in our county it is split into districts and so this is the only district that is all within District 3 or which is all within the city of Shakopee and with that I think it's very important that we have a strong voice on the county board. So I've not been in, in office before. However, I have been extremely involved in the community. I have served on boards at, in commissions at the school, at the city and at the county level. At the school, I've been involved in the PTO board, 
been treasurer, even was given an award by the school district for the Above and Beyond Volunteer Award, which is something I am personally very, very proud of. Also serving on the Guiding Coalition as we're trying to address our ever-growing schools here. At the city, I serve on the Shakopee Economic Development Advisory Board. And at the county, I have served on the Community Health Advisory Board, and I chaired the Health and Human Services Research Council for five years. That one's very significant because one of the biggest budget line items for the county is Health and Human Services. Our mandate with that committee was to recommend the budget to the county board. I also serve on the First Stop Shop Advisory Board. What that is, is a collaborative effort between the uh, SCALE, the Scott County Association for Leadership and Efficiency, and the Community Development Agency of Scott County. What we do there is we're setting up plans and implementing uh, methods to be able to uh, help cities throughout the county with their economic development planning. And that has been a great resource, and I have been a very big part of helping to get that set up informed <clears throat> and say overall what I would say is, is with the combination of my background in business my active community volunteering I am a perfect person to be on the Scott County Board I in my business every day we take these complicated problems and come up with things that make things work we get things done and that's what I would do as a representative on the Scott County Board Thank you. Thank you very much. Candidates, I'll remind you, microphone closer rather than farther away so everybody can hear you through the speakers. We've got a lot of people in the back of the room, so be sure you hold that microphone close and you speak up so everybody can hear you. Mr. Bird, time now for your introductory statement. Thank you, Tom. Um, it's Beard, Mike Beard, <laughs> but that's, that's quite all right. I just don't call me late for dinner, I'm, and I'm good. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight and uh, on a beautiful night when we all could be home working in the gardens or uh, uh, mowing the grass or something like that. You've taken the time out to be involved in civic affairs in our town and in our county. Angie and the Senda Chamber, I want to say thank you to you folks for consistently putting on uh, a first class presentation, an opportunity for those of us who want to ask the voters for the privilege of leading them and representing them, where we can come together and tell you a little about ourselves and let you poke at us a little bit and see how we think about things and how we process questions and problems and hypothetical situations you pose to us. This is very good for the community and the, uh, the Chamber is to be applauded uh, for doing that. Thank you for having us here tonight. Karen and I moved here 28 years ago uh, this fall and uh, we moved here on purpose because we were looking for a place where we could build our own home for a city and a county that would work with little old us uh, to build our, our dream home up on the east end of town. It also helped that we had a very good school system and at that time four kids in elementary schools that uh, we put into the Shakopee school system. That was a few years ago. They're all grown and gone now have lives of their own. All of them live within about 30 minutes of grandma and grandpa in small towns around here. The small town atmosphere that they were raised in, which was Shakopee, uh, was something they found to their liking, which pleases Karen and me to a great deal. So they live in small towns all around us. Karen and I continue to make our home here up on the east end off of County Road 18. I also started my civic involvement in Shakopee, uh, first of all with the chamber, but with the Economic Development Commission. A fun committee to be on because everybody's glad to see you coming and you hear about all the really cool things that are going to happen in town. What I remember most about that though is learning about the people who went before us on whose shoulders we were standing. The old Eagle Creek Township Board and how they laid that all out to be our industrial park and the way the city accommodated the railroad, the river port and the highway with the mini bypass plans, the bypass plans, and of course, the Scott County Transportation Coalition that got the ferry bridge done. All very uh, active times, dynamic times, and yielded an enormous education to this young man on how things worked and how people collaborate together across jurisdictional lines, across party lines, to get things done and to help Scott County be the county it is today. Twelve years ago, the voters of this district honored me by electing me to be their state representative in St. Paul. I've served six terms there. What a ride. What an amazing place to serve. I wish each one of you could be there for a term. It would make us all better citizens, more attentive taxpayers, and perhaps tamp down some of the enthusiasm we have for big government 
once you actually are engaged in creating law and making programs, you'd understand, I think, and have an appreciation for just what private citizens do, like here in Scott County, where we roll up our sleeves and we get together once a month, well, for instance, at scale, and talk about things and figure out how to do the things we're tasked to do when we govern with less and do it better and do it in a way that maximizes people's freedom and liberty and still accomplishes the, co the, go the goals and the core functions of government that we agree on. The 12 years I've been in St. Paul have um, allowed me to be, um, become known, I guess develop a reputation, uh, ex expertise. I've been privileged all 12 years to serve on the Transportation Committee, also on the Energy Committee. Eight of those 12 years I served on local governance, which oversees the Met Council and the functions of the counties and the cities. These things, I think, will serve well as I'm a candidate for Scott County Commissioner. I'm known by the people that we associate with around the state, the Metropolitan Intercounty Association, the League of Minnesota Cities, the Suburban, uh, Suburban Association that we're a part of here in uh, Shakopee. More importantly, I understand the lay of the land down there and the way the legislature works, particularly the way the leadership is set up to run the place and the way they view those of us who live in the hinterlands here in Scott County. We live in a seven county metropolitan area. Perhaps we'll have a mo uh, questions about this a little later. We can talk a little more about it. But having someone who actually has helped craft, attempted to maybe is a better way to put it, to alter the Met Council and its trajectory and where it's going. It's a creature of the legislature, but it's run by the government, by the governor. Uh, these things are important. And it's important to have somebody who's actually walked the walk, talked the talk, and been in the middle of that fray and knows the players involved. I think that's some of the strength I bring to the Scott County Board as a candidate, and I'm looking forward to expounding on that a little bit more going forward. We'll now begin the question and answer portion of the forum. Mr. Beard, if uh, you would please choose a question, and you'll answer that first. You'll choose that, and then I'll ask that to each candidate, but Mr. Beard, you will answer it first. What is your, and reminder, one minute for the candidates for the, uh, for the answer. What is your main motivation in running for a position as Scott County Commissioner? For me, it's a continuation of the service that I've had, only I want to bring back the experience and the, the reputation and the connections I've gained in St. Paul, where it's a very partisan and rough and tumble place that doesn't exactly appeal to my personality, which is a much more collegial and collaborative kind of style. The Scott County Board is only five instead of 201. There aren't any gotcha amendments on the Scott County, Scott County Board. Nobody's out to do you in or beat you up in the next election that I know of, anyhow. I think um, all those things can come to play as a Scott County Commissioner, and all that investment that the voters of this district have made over the last dozen years will, will be a great return on investment if I'm a Scott County Commissioner representing Shakopee in District 3 in November. Ms. Barber, if you would take the microphone and I'll... Oh, okay, yeah. She gets the same question, correct? Yes, yeah. So again, I'll pose this to you. What is your main motivation for running for a position as Scott County Commissioner? I was motivated to run um, initially, and even I ran two years ago, for those who don't know, uh, because I think that there's this great opportunity to do more and start moving our county ahead. I think that we did what we needed to do during the recession, but I would like to see things move to make this community as stellar as possible. And that is not just, uh, obviously we want to keep our taxes reasonable, but we want these great livable communities. We have, now we'll have more funding challenges, even though the recession has gotten better, but we have these funding challenges. And so I'm motivated to do it because I see problems or I see where there could be potential issues and I'm good at fixing things. I'm good at working with people and I'm good at coming up with complex or, or good solutions. And I think a lot of that comes from the ability to interact with people and not having the partisan history or having any ill will to anyone. I just want to work with people and get them together to get to the best solution. Okay, candidate Barber, now you will 
choose a question, and you'll have the opportunity to answer that first. So this is a two-parter, so I ask both parts at once, okay? How would you describe the current state of transportation infrastructure in Scott County? What do you believe Scott County's direction for transportation infrastructure should be in the future? I would say we've made some great strides, especially when you look at things like the 101 bridge. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, things like that. But, but there are some significant challenges coming up. And a lot of that has to do right now with the alignment and the way that some of the funding is coming through Met Council. So I think our biggest issue is, yes, we need to have improvements in roads, especially on 169. However, we're going to have increased challenges with funding. So there's only so much money that comes from the county. Our county staff has done a great job of working to get grants, which through the Met Council initially had been based on the things you would expect roads to be based on. Things like, is it safe? Uh, or is there safety concerns? Um, is there a congestion issue? Well, now they've changed those requirements, so it's really focused up more into the metro area inside the 494 ring. And so I think that's going to be one of our biggest challenges is getting funding for some of the projects that we know we need to do. Because it's not just uh, the traffic going north on 169, the county continues to grow, and so we need to continue to look at exits and things downstream as well. Candidate Beard, I'll ask you that two-part question again. How would you describe the current state of transportation infrastructure in Scott County? What do you believe Scott County's direction for transportation infrastructure should be in the future? I think the general condition of this infrastructure we have in place now is actually very good. Uh, the roads that have been turned back to us have been reconditioned and handed back to the county. Uh, so when it comes to the quality of the pavement, uh, we're in pretty good shape. When it comes to transit services, which is also a component of transportation, we've got uh, some uh, transit that meets the needs that are there. There could be more, but one of the things you want to watch is how much uh, you get into for subsidization and creating uh, uh, an expectation or a drain on future tax dollars. Uh, I think that one of the things the county is doing that I applaud is uh, Shockby and Prior Lake are joining the Minnesota Valley Transportation Authority. Um, MVTA is one of the best run opt-out transit providers in the state. I'm glad to see us stepping in that direction. There's some trouble on the future, and I Ken Day Barber touched on it. Met Council is after us by pulling in all kinds of uh, nefarious things into the transportation component, like uh, equity, whatever that means. Uh, um, there's going to be some things going on with our uh, uh, ADA compliance service that are going to be troubling. And I think as a candidate, I'd, as a commissioner, I'd be one that would uh, be in there fighting them at council for disrupting and making things worse. Okay. We'll have you keep the microphone and we'll get um, have you choose our next question. Thank you, Gary. If a genie granted you the power to accomplish one thing as a county commissioner, what would it be and why? <laughs> Quiet zone, so the train doesn't blow whistles coming through town. <laughs> Wow, well I live in the real world so I usually don't deal with genies, but uh, if I could do anything, what would it be? Um, would probably be to make the uh, Met Council's um, 2040 plan and our comprehensive plans absolutely reverse roles. If I could do anything, it would be to first of all reorganize the Metropolitan Council's governance structure to empower the counties and the cities to run the show, not the other way around. Comp plans would come from the Met Council to us to approve or deny or tell them to alter. And their 2040 plan wouldn't come from the top down. We would cook it up. In fact, I don't even know if we'd have one. I think we would take care of the business that we had to take care of, and we would have the Met Council back to a planning advisory role and running the sewer system like they used to. If, I was a, if there was a genie and could grant me one wish as a Scott County Commissioner, that would probably have the most immediate benefit to all of our counties. All right. Candidate Barber, I'll repeat the question. If a genie granted you the power to accomplish one thing as a county commissioner, what would it be and why? 
If I had a genie who granted me a wish, what I would like to see is actually a continuation of something that Commissioner Menden really has spearheaded, and that is a focus on uh, advancing and improving childhood education for disadvantaged children. Right now, uh, the the jail system is populated with a number of people who uh, did not necessarily receive the same support and education many of us did as, as young people. And in fact, right now at this point in time, there are 700 to 800 third graders in Scott County who still can't read. Those children are at high risk very high risk to land in the community corrections or jail programs. And one of the things I would like to see is some collaborative program between the county and the, um, uh, the county and the schools or something to advance that and improve that because in the long run, that's one of our highest costs. One of our highest costs in the county has to do with community corrections. If we can do something and help someone along the way, then we've done a good job. No, you can hang on to the microphone and uh, we'll have our, our next question. I believe we have a total of nine questions and looks like we'll probably get through all of those potentially. Tell us what sets you apart from the other county commissioner candidates. That's a very good question. I think what sets me apart is my business background. I really think that does come into play here. Uh, I've worked in my business directly one-on-one -on -one with engineers all the way to sitting up and addressing and working with boardrooms. And in that process, working with the teams that are formed by some of those people to get consensus, which is often very challenging. When you're in something like that, the engineers want something or the CEO and the CFO want something very different. And you have to find the answer somewhere in the middle. And that's what I do every day. I think that is really one of my great skill sets and is something that I can bring as a great advantage to the Scott County Board. I'll repeat the question. Tell us what sets you apart from the other county commissioner candidates. When I left the legislature in May, um, one of the small honors that never made the paper that I got was when one of my DFL colleagues, a college professor, came to me and awarded me a model legislator pin. Uh, it's not this one, this is my Scott County pin. He explained that he has a class at Winona State that watches tapes of the legislature every year and ranks the legislators and then picks the top few and awards them a model legislator award. The reason I got that was because of my style, my collaboration, my get along ability quotient, which is pretty big, and the regard I was held in by my colleagues. I think that sets me apart. It was quite an honor to get that, by the way, and I got that bipartisanly. Um, I, that didn't come by a fluke. And didn't come because that guy's my favorite or I'm his. It came because I earned it. That reputation, those connections, and the way I'm regarded by the other county commissioners, a half a dozen of whom are, will be former colleagues of mine from the legislature, I think sets me apart. I hit the ground running. I know the system. I know people. And I know how to carry Scott County's colors when I'm dealing in the metropolitan area. Okay. Thank you. We'll have you keep the microphone. Choose the next question. Again, another two-part question. What do you think is the key to an efficient county government? What do you believe is the biggest obstacle to an efficient county government? I'm going to say two things. The first one is a big one, and it's morale. This county is one of the best-run counties in the state of Minnesota. The morale that was set by the pre previous county administrator and the current county administrator in working with the unions that um, um, represent our employees at the courthouse, about seven, 700 of them or so, is one of the best, some of the best morale in the, in the state. When the Great Recession hit, what, seven years ago now? Other counties, I heard horror stories at the legislature about other counties and about how they were struggling to get things done, struggling with layoffs. Do you know our county unions and our administration and the board all work together to flatline the budget, actually take pay cuts so that they wouldn't have to raise the taxes on the hardworking citizens of this county who are also in the same boat and suffering through the same issues. I would say morale is the first answer and probably morale is the second answer. 
With that, you can't underestimate the importance of scale. The idea of having coffee and donuts, which I'm very fond of, by the way, once a month with everybody in the county, from township officials on up to Finish county this officials, thought, please. is it's hard to underestimate how important that is. That's just good to right help there. Thank you along. very much. Thank you. Be mindful of the time cards, candidates. We're going to stick to that as uh, strictly as we can tonight. I'll repeat the question for you. What do you think is the key to an efficient county government? What do you believe is the biggest obstacle to an efficient county government? I think the key to an efficient county government is continuing to break down the silos bet between departments at the county. Uh, they've done some of that, but I think the more that they do, uh, that will be helpful. I think some of the uh, concerns of what makes a county less efficient has to do with a number of the regulations and rules that have been passed down from the state and federal government, especially in the state government, down to health and human services. I know this, like I said, I chaired the Human Resource Set Council. You can have one service and have 20 different forms and where you could have something that could be streamlined and improved with technology but instead these people you have to fill out the you know some form 20 different times and it it's very very inefficient it's very labor intensive and if we can switch to new technologies and also try and uh, uh, eliminate some of the red tape coming down from the state to the counties I think that efficiency would be improved greatly our next question please In your opinion, what are the greatest opportunities and obstacles for job growth in our local area? I think some of the greatest opportunities for job growth uh, are very similar to what we've been doing in getting some of the bigger companies in town, at least getting some attention here. And I think we need to start spreading that throughout the county some more. And I think that is something working with First Stop Shop that is certainly key and it's very important. I like that the county has also started working and looking at uh, uh, business retention and expansion programs. And because it's important, we've got a lot of great small businesses here with great potential if we can get some of those and foster some of that as well that would be very helpful we also have a program here in the county called economic gardening that also is at that where you're trying to take a, a mid-sized small company to make them a big company and the more we can do of that I think the better because businesses always need some help whether it's some collaboration or uh, learning from somebody else who's already been there um, then we go to what I think could be the potential biggest issue related to um, economic development and I think it really comes down to roads and transportation. We still have to get people and goods back and forth and we do have congestion and some issues here in the county. Okay, repeating the question, in your opinion, what are the greatest opportunities and obstacles for job growth in our local area? The ones that we can control as a county are the ones that have already been given to us by those whose shoulders we're standing on. A great industrial park, a railroad system that just went by, which is a private railroad system, by the way, highways, river crossings, and we're fighting for more. The 101 crossing is coming. We're working on the permanent restriping of the ferry bridge and some other things up there. Those are the things I think are the greatest opportunities we have. That and one thing that connects to the last question we talked about too, and that's respect for the taxpayer. We have among the lowest taxes in the metro area for a county. Businesses notice that. Now admittedly, the legislature has a lot to do with business uh, property taxes as well, but this county has a can-do attitude towards business expansion and business growth. That is a huge opportunity. Conversely, the threats to that come mostly from Washington, maybe from St. Paul, and if we would ever lose the respect and admiration for the taxpayers and the private entrepreneurs who build businesses in this county. All right, very good, thank you. Um, how many questions do we have left? Got, okay, so I don't know if we'll get through all of them, but we're moving, moving right along. Just to clarify, at 7.35, Lori, at 7.35, that's when we want the f closing statements to begin. Okay, we'll get a, a few more of these questions in, maybe all of them. 
All right, uh, Candidate Beard, uh, you're next. Uh, as a county commissioner, how would you pursue economic development on a local level? As opposed to, say, going to San Francisco and enticing someone to come here, or I'm, I'm grappling with the meaning of the question, but let me just take a run at it. Yeah, again. take a run at it. Back to the first theme, the theme I mentioned just a few moments ago, and that's respect. Respect for the taxpayers and the job creators that come here, that are already here working uh, to employ people that maybe didn't get a government grant from Washington or from St. Paul. Do you know of the five or six businesses that just grew here, I can name at least two of them that told the, the state and the county, keep your money, we're okay. You've got a good place to do business, we want to be here, we're good with that. Those are the people that we have to pay the most admiration and respect to. We need to hear those concerns, and every small businessman I know out there that owns their own property, even the ones that lease, actually, any, they end up paying those real estate taxes. That's what we control the most uh, as a county board. The real estate tax is the county portion of that. Beyond that is the regulatory regime. So if you're farming or mining, we want to make sure that we got reasonable regulations that allow you to do your work, put the land back the way you found it, but still extract the value and, and run your business in accord with good business principles that still protect your neighbors. That has a lot to do with attitude and respect towards business people, and I would ensure that. Okay. I'll repeat the question. As a county commissioner, how would you pursue economic development on a local level? Again, like I said before, I think this is something we're doing quite well. Um, I think that the county has been, especially with the formation of the first stop shop, and in there right now, it's the focusing and the interface back and forth with the cities. How can we help make it easier? What can we do? What information can we provide? Sometimes leads come in and you need to respond to them within a day. Well, that's the job of the first stop shop, is to help provide some of that information and to work cooperatively with the cities throughout the county. Um, because I think not only does that help set us apart in Scott County with this unique program to begin with, but now we're taking it to a further level where we're really focusing on customer service. And customer service from the perspective of the business is the customer, the citizen is the customer, and utilizing that information and doing an approach that way is very unique. It's not something you see from government, it's not something you see from a county, but it is something that we are doing here. And it is something that I've helped shape through my work with the First Stop Shop. Based on our time schedule, I believe this will be the final question before the closing statement. So we'll let candidate Barber draw the final question and answer that first. Who is your political inspiration and why? Who is your political inspiration and why? Uh, that's actually an easy one. So my political inspirations are my parents. And we came from a feisty Irish family, and every dinner, every night was filled with discussions back and forth. None of us agree. We all disagree. But you could have these great conversations back and forth about whatever issue it was. And at the end of the day, we still all loved each other and had dinner and had dessert and went to bed. But that was, I look back, and my parents have very different political views. And But to watch them, they got involved. They did what I did. They. they the reason I do what I do when I moved here and got involved in the community was because I learned it from them. And it's something that I'm hoping I'm passing on to my children. I hope someday one of my kids is asked that question and they can say it's me. Final answer to the final question. Who is your political inspiration and why? I suppose everybody in the room thinks I would say Ronald Reagan. Uh, not so. I mean, Ronald Reagan was much better looking than I am and could speak way better than I can. I'll never be that good. But I will tell you, it's uh, Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman was an economist who, uh, the anniversary of his uh, uh, birth or birthday was uh, July 31st, I believe. hundred and some years old he'd be if he was still alive today. He championed, among other things, school choice, free markets, less government, less regulation, but mostly it was about free markets. As an economist, he had amazing political insight. And that's one of the philosophies I govern by. I believe in you and your enlightened self-interest. You will work in your own best self-interest and people will do business with you because they like you and they know you're a straight shooter. We should reward that as government. We should make it easy for people to 
engage in the miracle of the free market, which is unprecedented in the history of the world, by the way. Milton Friedman's my hero. You want to hear more or know more about how I think about things and why I do? Read Milton Friedman's work. Okay. So our time for the question and answer portion of this forum has come to an end. Now anyone who might have some questions, might not have had a question answered during the question and answer portion, candidates, uh, you can talk to them after the debate this evening or you can contact their campaign offices and you can find more about the candidates at the Chamber's website, which is uh, shakopee.org. Each candidate will now have up to two minutes for their closing statement and we'll begin with candidate Beard. Thank you, Tom, and thank you to all of you for being here tonight, for uh, peppering us with some questions, just to kind of get a small insight on in how we think about things. I think you've got good choices in front of you. I always applaud my opponent for having the courage to step up and run, putting name and reputation on the line, and asking you for your support. I'm doing the same thing. I think it's pretty clear what I have to bring, the, um, the experience, the connections, the reputation, quickly coming up to speed, and having a basic understanding of how uh, the county is an extension of the state legislature and performs the will of the legislature here on the local level. I also have a very profound respect for business people, entrepreneurs, folks who are just living their lives and living the American dream and the property that they own because in this state, county government is funded with property taxes, which is probably the most regressive and most dangerous tax out there. We must be very, very respectful with that. I also need to give thanks to Karen Beard, who can't be with us tonight here. But for 43 years, that woman has stood beside me. We've had an amazing adventure. Uh, when we graduated from Bible school, in fact, you'd have never believed if you'd ever heard me try to give a public speech that I would actually be a public servant speaking to roomfuls of people and actually enjoying it. It's a pretty amazing thing. But I have to thank her for standing with me, for putting up with public involvement. We can't even go to the supermarket without people stopping and chatting, which I thrive on. Her not so much. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you, Karen, uh, for making this possible. And to the chamber, when I joined the chamber all these years ago, what an amazing group of people. You make the world go round. You are the local businesses that we look out for, whether we're in Washington, St. Paul, or up here at the courthouse or on the city council, where I also served a term during a very amazing time in Shakopee's history. I'm looking forward to continuing in the good work, like making sure the 101 bridge gets finished and serves our county well. The merger with the bus company happens. The ferry bridge continues to grow, and the transit options continue to grow in a reasonable and sensible way. Thank you for your attention to the details tonight. I'll be around. You can ask questions. Thank you very much. I also would like to thank you all for coming out tonight. It really is nice to come out and, and visit and to get to answer some questions. I think it is good to see a little bit about us and, and really, really appreciate you all taking the time. And thank you, Tom, for moderating. You did a very nice job. Now, I just want to close just with one sort of thoughts of what I do. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been going out and meeting with county leadership. Do I need to do this yet? No. I don't have the job, but I'm going out and I'm taking the time and I'm making sure that I'm educated and I know the issues. I've been in and out of all the departments and spent many hours talking with all of them. I'm very fluent in what's going on at the county. Uh, do I have all the answers? Not yet, but I'm quite sure Representative Beard doesn't yet either. But I think that what I have learned is I've learned a great deal and I can apply that and I can go in and I can go out and talk to citizens and can find out what needs to be done. I believe at this point it really is time for somebody new and fresh on the board, new ideas, a way to ch actually come up and look at things to approach these new challenges because I do believe it will be a challenging time now. We did make it through the recession and very much kudos to county staff and to the unions and everybody who muscled through and to the county boards. However, now it, things are going to get tough. We have to be creative and I think that's what I can bring to this is the ability to be creative and to be a very, very strong representative for, si or for Shakopee and for Scott County. Thank you all. Everyone, as we bring this part of the evening to a close, we need to say that the views expressed in tonight's debate are those strictly of the candidates 
and not those of the Chamber and Visitors Bureau. The Chamber is sponsoring this event as a service to the community and has gone to great lengths to ensure the objectivity of this forum. The Chamber does not endorse any candidates, but seeks to provide you, the citizens and voters of Shakopee, with the information you need to make an informed choice. Thank you to the audience this evening and to our host, Turtles, on behalf of the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau, you as well as all of our candidates, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We appreciate your candor and the way that you are serving our community by running for office. You are performing an important service to us all. Now remember everybody, the primary election is on Tuesday, the 12th of August, and please remember to vote. We will now take a brief intermission while we prepare for our Minnesota House of Representatives District 55A candidates. Thank you very much and good evening.